Hello, I'm Paramax. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to make your very own Vendi Graph Generator. So, what is a Vendi Graph Generator? Well, it is a machine that builds up an electrical charge on a sphere. It was invented by Robert J. Vendi Graph in 1929. Its operation is actually very simple. You know how when you scuff your feet on the carpet and then go to touch a switch or other metal object and you get a nasty shock? Well, a Vendi Graph Generator is an automated version of this effect, called the Tribal Luminescence Effect. Here's how to build it. For this project, you will need the following. Lots of duct tape and electrical tape, a top load, a tube about the size of a marker, a wide rubber band, a fuse, a small hobby motor, a power supply, some paper clips, some wire, and something to mount everything to. First, take your motor, grab a piece of electrical tape about this big, and wrap it around the motor's shaft. Once you're done, take your motor and solder the wires to the terminals on the motor. Now wire it up and hope for the best. And as you can tell, our motor is working. Next, grab your tube. If you can't find one, you can get a hold of one from a gutted marker. Use a Saturn iron to melt a hole about a quarter of an inch wide. Now just scrape away the residue left by the solder iron. If the motor's shaft is too long and doesn't fit, melt another quarter inch hole directly across from the first one. Just like before, continue to clean out the hole. Now we want to make sure that the motor fits snug in the holes we made. Make any adjustments or modifications as necessary. Now, take your rubber band and feed it down the tube. Make sure that the rubber band is lined up with the holes. Now, pick up your motor and fit it through both holes. Again, make sure that it is snug and well aligned before you glue it into place. Now, just glue it on. Now take your fuse. Now what we need to do is take off the caps. First, put a blob of solder on the iron. This will help transfer the heat to the fuse. Now, heat up the cap with the iron. This will take a moment. Do the same for the other side. Now, you 
you have your fragile glass tube roller. Now get your paper clip and unbend it. Now place the modified fuse halfway down the clip. Next, you want to bend the paper clip around the fuse so it makes a bracket shape. Continue to bend it to shape. Now it should fit nicely over your tube. Cut the paper clip the length. Now take the ends and bend them into little hook shapes facing upwards. This will prevent Corona from leaking the charge to ground, thus improving the output of your generator. Next, we need to take the roller piece we just made, feed it through the rubber band, position it, and tape it to place. Make sure it is well aligned with the band so it won't wander off to one side or the other. Now for the hard part. We will need to tape it down to place while still holding and maintaining tension on it. Make sure to tape it as tightly as possible. We don't want it slipping. Make sure that the roller at the top is aligned with the motor's shaft. Now plug it up and see how well it works. As you can tell, it's a little loud and needs some more adjustments. What we need to do is get some lubricant down in there. Now we're gonna test it again. Much better. Next, take your paper clip and unbend it just like we did before. After you're done bending it, it should look like this. This is what it should look like when you're done. This is going to be the sporting piece for our top dome. Now we're almost done. For part 2, we will be adding support for the top load, adding the all important brushes, and mounting the Venigraph generator. Take the modified paper clip and tape it to place. Make sure to cover up any of the exposed parts of the paper clip with tape. Now we need to make the bottom brush. So get a wire, strip out a generous amount, bend it as shown, and spread the bristles out. Now just bend it to shape.
this is what it should look like when you're done. Now all that's left is to position and tape it on. Make sure that the brush is very close but not touching the rubber band. Now we need to make the bottom brush. So get a wire, strip out a generous amount, bend it as shown, and spread the bristles out. And don't forget to trim the bristles down flat. Now we need to mount the brush. Take your glue gun and add a strand of glue to the bottom of the motor. After you're done, glue the wire on. Again, make sure that the bristles are very close but not touching the rubber band. Now we need to mount it to something. In my case, I have a whiteboard eraser. I added a strand of duct tape to the eraser to prevent the hot glue from melting the foam. Now, glue the motor to the duct tape. Now let's see if the thing works or not, and make a couple minor improvements too. As you can see, we're having a centimeter long spark here, about every second. Not too bad for a homemade generator. After playing with this generator for a little bit, I've made some improvements to it. One of the most obvious is the plastic lid I've added. I also played around with the design of the brush. I found the best design looks a little bit like this. I added a bunch more tape. And you can see what holds the lid there. There's also a lot of tape there to prevent corona. And I added some tape to the shaft right there. And now I'm able to get larger sparks. Now let's hook it up and try it out. Well, I forgot to add a switch. So if you build this, make sure to add one. Otherwise, you'll end up like me. the occasional arc. Much more powerful. And just a little bit longer too. And all my little knickknacks that I made. Here's a top view from it. As you can see that all happens a little quicker than that. See what a little polarizing if yep, there it went. Polarizing filter. Of course, nothing wants to stay on it after it's been charged. Do you guys have any suggestions? Post them in the comments. This has been a PowerMax production. If you like what I do, please rate, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.